Good afternoon, friends. It's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. I hope you are doing well today. Uh, it's kind of a hot day. I do have some garden chores to do, but they're gonna have to wait till later in the day. But I am hoping you will like to join me on a garden notes walk. So what's a garden notes walk? Well, this is something that I like to do a couple times a year. Um, and I figure if I do it on film, then I'll have the documentation and I can take notes from that while I'm editing. But I like to go around to all the sections of my property and basically take notes of like what needs to be done and whether that's a instant do it now or before fall or whatever, um, or, you know, much further down the line, the wish list. It's just really important to kind of keep, for me, to keep that kind of running list in my head. Um, and it's great because it fills in a lot of times some of these projects I could do in the winter time when not much is growing, things are dormant. Um, so it gives me a little bit more uh, ideas and things to do in the winter when you're not gardening. And um, also takes the load off trying to do that during the growing season. So we're gonna start here uh, by the garage in this bed that I built a few years ago, five, maybe five years ago. Uh, now it's hard to really tell what's going on in here because we've got the storage unit here. Um, but, uh, this is not under irrigation. It does have irrigation in it, but that zone has not worked in ages. One of the things that we are going to be doing in very early spring is having a professional guy who does irrigation for a living come out and really, uh, kind of fix everything that's broken across the whole property because there's a lot. I can handle drip irrigation fairly well, but I know nothing about underground irrigation and all that kind of stuff. So I'd rather pay somebody who knows what they're doing to do that. Um, but this bed is just one of the beds that's going to need help. So uh, this is a euphorbia. I planted that. This is something I planted. I don't even remember what it is. We've got uh, these are seedlings from the poplar tree. So like this just all needs to get cleaned out. Now this is Nandina, uh, which I absolutely hate. It was here before we moved in and it encroaches on this bed really badly. It's kind of like ivy. It's really hard to get rid of. So I need to come in and clean that. Basically this whole bed needs to get cleaned out. Um, but there are things in here like some salvias and you can see all the, all the lavender, which the bees absolutely love. The beehives are right there. You can see them flying back and forth. So this whole bed needs to be addressed. So that's the first thing. That is a giant manzanita, actually a few of them, and some cotoneaster that's also woven through there. All of that needs to get trimmed up. It hasn't been um, pruned in ages. It doesn't really need to be pruned, but I do wanna get in there this winter and cut back a lot of the dead stuff. Uh, Cause you can see like there's some, there's like some dead stuff right there. That all needs to come out. So that's the first job. And I can tell already my camera's probably gonna stop working because it's hot out here. Standing in the shade to hope to uh, make this a little bit better. More jobs. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly today. Uh, all this needs to get cleaned up. This is just on the side, you know, here's the garden here. The beehives are around the corner there. There's just some garbage and pallets and stuff down here. You can see, <laughs> you can see how much the deer really love these uh, saplings. They just get eaten. Um, and then of course my grapes and all the blackberries and stuff, all of that will get pruned back in the fall. So I'm not too worried about that. One of the plans that we were hoping to do this year, but we just don't have the money for it. This driveway is big, but it's, it slopes really badly this way. It's all crumbling and falling apart over there. This whole area, which is holds our garbage cans, it's also falling apart. Um, we would like to either put a shed here um, or build it like an enclosed area for the garbage can so they're not so visible from the street because the street's right there. Um, okay, so, and then redo this whole driveway. It's all cracked and again, severely sloped this way. Um, this is the native pollinator bed and it's doing great. We've got phacelia and a, just a whole bunch of wildflower seeds that we sprinkled in here that are coming up. They'll be even better next year because they're all perennials. Uh, but they need water today. Um, I need to repot these two um, 
there is lavender in there now, not doing so great, but I want to completely change those out for fall, have some cute, probably mums in there, the little decorative ones. All right, in the garden. Um, mostly this is just stuff that needs to happen for fall, but this is going to be our garlic bed this coming year. Um, so at some point in October, all the peppers will come out and the garlic will go in. And again, I'll have to uh, tame <laughs> everything back here. I always do the uh, pruning on the blackberries uh, once they go dormant, but that will clean this whole area up. Um, and of course these beds will get converted to stuff for the fall garden. This bed, I need to uh, cut back the, this is all heat damage on these peonies, but this is normal for this time of year. I need to cut all these back and we'll, when we get a load of compost, we'll add another layer of compost on top of this for the winter. Uh, these guys all doing well. These beans looking beautiful and the cucumbers are happily growing. I'm hoping with this hot weather we're having, we'll get a few more days of it and we'll get more, we'll get some flowers. Okay, uh, obviously in January, gonna need to prune back the rose arch. That's a normal thing. Also in usually April uh, or like late, sorry, late February, early March, I cut all of these to the ground. This is salvia and buddleia. Everything gets cut back so that it will give a nice fresh flush um, the following year. And I don't think we're gonna be doing any winter, well, yes, actually we will. So I'm probably gonna do some winter pruning. I did a hard summer pruning on these on this pear tree, but it's already shot up a whole bunch of new growth. So we will be doing some winter pruning um, this year just to keep everything to size. Okay, we're gonna have to get more compost to put a one to two inch layer on everything in the garden and retop all these beds. Um, so that's coming. Um, continuing to harvest tomatoes and we're still getting <laughs> pumpkins and stuff popping up in here don't know if they'll have enough time to get big enough there's another one right there this bed i'm going to take the oyas out of that birdie's bed over there put them in here so this bed has some sort of irrigation it's not going to need it uh you know for the fall because we'll be getting rain but for next year it'll be important so that about does it for this area. Um, however, this, hi ladies, this bed here, uh, which basically is just supporting the um, passion fruit vine, um, it needs a lot more soil. <laughs> so it'll get that as well. Okay, more of the ugly. So this area here has been just pummeled by dust and stuff from the construction. Look at all this. This is an azalea. So all of these plants are going to need just some care when everything's finally done. The rain when it arrives will help greatly, but now this area is a new project. Um, there was, just until last week, this giant Laura Petalum here. Huge. I mean, it came up to like here uh, and it stuck way out. It made it hard uh, to get to the to the walkway here um, and it really blocked view so uh, you know eventually like I said we would like to pull all this out change this walkway make it more of a straight line so that there's not this bump out here and um, there's a new law in California that pretty soon I mean right now we're okay but once it gets enacted in the next year or so all anything that's up against your house within five feet um, has to come out uh, and that's for fire safety so this whole strip of camellias azaleas and then of course the uh the maples will have to come out and you cannot use wood um mulch so we're thinking it would be really cool to do a gravel garden there with some succulents. So you're allowed to have certain plants that are permissible. The whole idea is to have a defensible area and all the science over the last 25 years about fire around homes shows that five feet is really kind of all you need for the major defensible area. So with the bed, as well as a walkway, we have more than that. Now this area here, um, it's, we're not gonna be able to redo this anytime soon. This is probably a couple years away. So in the meantime, 
we're going to put some shade loving low growing plants here to fill in this area now we are right underneath a gorgeous redwood so we are limited to what we can put down here and we also had some dying shrubs here um, and you can see there's like a remnant there uh, that we also pulled out and you know we're just going to put some low growing stuff that can handle not only the, the acidity of the um, needles but also the deep shade because this is in shade pretty much 24 7. Um, and there are plenty of plants for dry shade uh, and a lot of them are native in California so we're going to put a few in here um, and we have to be very careful of the roots. Redwoods have very shallow root systems and they go very far that's what keeps them upright so that's why we want something small and low grow uh, low growing so that it'll look pretty but it won't be at all damaging to the redwoods all right so that's another project that's probably going to be this fall um, and then you can see the reason we kept all this open in here um, when we redid this area is that it was right under this redwood and we didn't want to disturb the roots in fact when we laid down the mulch which was um, a, like eight inches of compost and then some wood chips um, we did not wood chip or or put any soil down in this area because with trees in general especially redwoods or other trees that have their roots on the surface if you cover them up with um, soil compost anything mulch you can actually suffocate the tree because they do respire transpire um, and take water in and out through the roots on that surface level so you don't want to do that or you'll end up killing your tree so this area has stayed empty we put a couple of rocks in there and it's fine uh, it gets its natural covering of natural mulch from the leaves of the redwood as it drops and also the maple and the trees are healthy uh, but we did add a whole bunch of stuff in here um, this Catoni Aster was already here. Now, I usually come through at the end of, I don't know, like March, early April, and do a major spring cleaning in here. I did not have the chance to do that this year, so it is so overgrown, which is okay, uh, but I'm gonna have to do some fall cleanup, and I usually wait till spring for that. So um, we've got Pittosporum back here. We've got three of them. Um, this giant Catoni Aster that's just going crazy. I mean, the nice thing about these is these long whip-like uh, stems make really nice foliage for um, bouquets and they definitely have long stems so I will be using a lot of the stuff that I cut. All of this lavender needs a major haircut if I'm going to get a beautiful new bloom of it next year. Um, you can see it's all dead um, so definitely we'll be doing some fall cleanup and usually I don't do fall cleanup I usually do it in the spring but you can see I never had time because all these brown things that is the leaves from the um, nasturtium, not nasturtium, from the daffodils that we're growing here. There are about 400 daffodils in this bed. And um, usually in the spring when I clean up, I pull off all the dead uh, leaves and I never did that. So you can see this needs a big haircut. <laughs> um, again, all the lavender, the monkey flower, like some of the stuff might be, need to be um, divided. Uh, but this beautiful time creeping time started out as individual plants and this was my dream and hope that this area would fill in i'll link below the early videos of when this was when we pulled out the giant lower petalums and it was just bare soil and we re-irrigated and replanted this whole hillside um i'd actually like to look back at that myself because it's really grown in it's been a number of years um and it's doing what i wanted it to do it's spilling over this rock wall and it's so pretty so again, all this stuff needs to get cleaned out. Bare areas here, but that's because of the redwood. So it's hard to get things to grow right here and we don't want to damage the roots. And so this whole area around here, it drives Mike crazy because he says it looks so bare, but this is how it is in the forest. <laughs> this area needs to get cleaned up as well. We've got some azaleas that are just struggling. They've been here since long before we were here. I mean, this whole thing is dead. That all needs to come out. We have this dead azalea over here that it's been needing to come out for a while. Uh, when we had trenchless sewer work done, they had to open up the walkway here and do the trenchless work and it damaged the roots and stuff. So we'll just pull that out. Um, and we're not gonna replace it with anything because again, all this stuff is gonna have to come out. 
So this is another big project. And frankly, I'm not sad about it because the soil here is so very alkaline. We're at an eight, our water is an eight, and camellias and azaleas, they need acidic soil. So twice, sometimes three times a year, I have to put um, iron sulfite down to acidify the soil. So it'll be nice to not have to do that. If we put gravel and succulents in, that's totally normal for this area. They'll survive. They won't even really need irrigation. It just makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, and then we have this disaster right here uh, that is this container next to the door. Uh, with all the construction, the front walk area here was really packed with stuff. And basically, I didn't water this thing for a long time. So I'm hoping I can at least resurrect the jasmine. I think the Boston Fern is dead. <laughs> Maybe not. They're pretty resilient. But anyway, this all needs to be cleaned up, replanted. So I'm going to be watering it every other day deeply and hope I can get it back. And these guys, dead and gone. <laughs> uh, this jade, suffering. Uh, mostly it's just because, again, covered with construction dust and, you know, hasn't been tended to. So these will all get planted out for fall, something totally different. I haven't made that decision yet. Um, all of these are going to stay even once we pull things out. This is Laura Petalum, a Japanese maple and more Laura Petalum. This provides some privacy screening here to the front porch. Okay, back here where all this construction dust is everywhere. See, look at all this. Usually this is in a lot better shape, but it hasn't been irrigated at all this summer because it was construction material here and still is. And so we couldn't run the sprinklers on this section here. So. Yeah, things are looking really rough. They'll revive. This is all fine. It's lobelia and lamium and wood, sweet woodruff. It'll come back, uh, but it's looking really rough uh, for now. Also through here are tons and tons of spring bulbs. So all of this needs to get cleaned out. We've got some eucharis and some grasses in here as well. But again, we kept it kind of foresty because that's kind of what it is. Again, all this. Gonna clean all this up, get rid of the dead stuff. No rush to do it. Um, but once the rains come, things will start looking a whole lot better. Now this is our, the retaining wall that's going to have to get replaced eventually. We've had a number of structural engineers, I think we've had five estimates at this point, come out and they all say, oh no, it's still fine. It looks horrific. <laughs> this, this lean, and we're so close to the house. But uh, we opted to do indoor uh, work this year. Next year, this will be the case. However, it is exceedingly expensive. This is a long stretch of retention wall that needs to come out. Uh, and then you've got all this soil here and all these trees. So it's real important that you have somebody who knows what they're doing to take care of this. Um, okay, this bed back here, uh, it's just grasses and stuff. I'll clean that up once all the construction's done. Um, there's a couple of uh, false Solomon seal and things like that in there. It's not a big deal, uh, but I don't think it's gotten any irrigation this, this summer yet. Okay. These containers, uh, there's some dead stuff here. These containers, I was going to put more tomatoes in uh, for another round, but the tomato seedlings I've started literally have not grown at all in the past three weeks. They've still got their cotyledon leaves and that's it. So I don't think there'll be any more tomatoes and that's okay. This bed, we'll just get in a little tidy. Um, it's still looking very pretty, uh, but what we'll save is, I think, Normally in the fall, I plant, um, I put a whole bunch of tulip bulbs and stuff in there so we have a spring show. However, in general, the squirrels dig most of them up even though I try to keep them protected. So I think I'm just gonna grow edibles in there. Why not put a giant head of cabbage in there? <laughs> I mean, those containers are great and I've been growing edibles, so I might as well continue. So I probably will put cabbage and maybe some small lettuces around the sides uh, to take advantage of, you know, the growth while the cabbage is still very young and then we'll get more food in a smaller space uh, that is relatively protected. Okay, uh, this is all citrus. It's it's doing fine. I do need to do some pruning for shaping and stuff, but that's not a rush. Uh, the lawn, which is not really lawn, it's mostly clover and that's okay because it's a habitat. Um, this is always looking awful in the summertime because the irrigation is all messed up. So this is one of the things, it's not messed up, it's just different. So this is one of the things I want this guy to, to fix for us. When we moved in, this was all lawn. And um, I started building out this 
cottage garden bed, which looks horrible right now because it's the end of its season, um, I started building this bed out and, you know, we still have the pop-up sprinklers for the lawn in here. So the sprinklers don't make it to parts of the grass. And then some of these plants block it from, it block the water from even getting to the front of the bed. So basically this whole strip needs to turn into drip or maybe taller pop-up sprinklers. And we need to adjust it so that the, the uh, lawn also gets it. Oh, hummingbird. That's magical. Uh, okay, so then these containers, the strawberries and um, sweet alyssum, obviously need some major pruning, but just keep pumping out. These are both perennials. Um, and I do need to get something climbing in here. I've tried clematis twice. Um, both times it got eaten at the root by something. So I am not gonna do clematis. As expected, the camera went out because it was too hot. So we will just continue on the phone. Uh, I only have a few more minutes to wrap this up and I gotta go pick up Aiden at school. So as I was saying, I'm still looking for something that I can use to climb. I tried doing um, butterfly pea this year. Again, it did not take off. I think I need to grow the seedling much bigger before I plant it because it probably got shaded out. Uh, but these are really productive. We get strawberries. Um, they're, this is ever bearing, so it's not just June bearing and we get them, we're still getting them, which is wonderful. Um, all of the roses will need to be pruned, um, but that won't happen until January. Um, <laughs> the one stem on this <laughs> hydrangea, this is a limelight hydrangea. Uh, I have plans for this area here. Um, I'm going to, so here's another limelight hydrangea, but it did not bloom this year, which is fine. Uh, they went in the ground really small. And of course this is all construction debris from the construction that's happening in our room. So we've got all kinds of crap back here. So until all this gets cleaned up, I can't really do much. Um, but this bed will need cleaning. I probably will leave it until spring uh, just because it still provides uh, fodder and food for birds and insects over the winter. And there's this big project. I have to wash all of these trays and sanitize them, find a home for this uh, flower rack, uh, just get all this stuff cleaned up. It's such a mess. You're definitely getting to see the ugly part <laughs> on this tour. Um, but I'm taking lots of notes and I think I have uh, some good ideas now of what I need to do. The final couple things. So I bought all of these succulents months ago. They've been being beaten up by squirrels and stuff. I desperately need to transplant them into some of my succulent containers where you know, things are, have died and they need to get pulled apart and put back together again. So that's still another project. And then the final project that I was thinking, I've been thinking about this year, especially. So there's identical containers. There's three right here and three over here. Um, the big giant one has a limelight hydrangea in it. And you can see they're blooming, but this year, these hydrangeas have bloomed way less, way less stems than they did have in the past. So I'm thinking that this winter, and also some of these pots, you know, they've, they've like shifted things of, you know, squirrels and mice and stuff had dug underneath. So I think I'm gonna pull all this apart on both sides, reset them, dig up, dig out the limelight hydrangeas and put those over in between the roses where they will get uh, more sun, have more space to spread out and grow because I think they're just getting too big root wise for these pots. I think that's the problem. So these will get relocated and then I will come up with a new plan for these containers. Now there are, there's an albutalon in each of the medium sized containers and they did bloom for me this year and they looked beautiful. And then we've got this one, um, this guy, Cyclamen, all went all summer it's been blooming because it's in the shade. It looks gorgeous. But that one over there just failed. So I will be reworking these. It will look a lot better, not so messy, uh, tidied up, and then also recentered and get everything re-leveled. Because when I try to water them, the water just runs off because the pots are tipping so much. And these seedlings have been sitting out overnight, every night for the past week. 
um, partially because I wanted them to get more sun. Uh, but they're just, see this, these are the tomatoes. They just haven't done anything. So you know what? That's okay. I think that's fine. I just won't have a second round of tomatoes, but these artichokes are looking great. So I'm going to give them a little more time to grow and then we will put those out in the front garden. And most of the seeds that we started, uh, last week on the 14th have germinated, um, so, you know, keeping an eye on these guys, they all, most of them don't have true leaves yet, but we'll thin and we'll make some selections and start tending to them and trying to get big beefy seedlings to go in the ground for the fall garden. So I have just a few seeds to sow this week in six packs. The rest are peas that need to go in the front garden. So what we'll do is we'll go out there and uh, clear out the dead squashes in the area that I'm going to put the peas. We'll amend that soil right there and put up a new trellis and direct sow more peas. Um, and so hopefully we'll get some good growth and I'll actually have a fall crop of peas, which I've never been able to have before. All right, you guys, that, that was kind of a weird video, uh, but thanks for joining me on that walkthrough. I am taking mental notes and I'll have be taking actual physical notes when I go to edit this of all the stuff that needs to get done. Uh, but thanks for joining me today and hanging out. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden. Let me know if you also do garden walks, note taking, and what kind of plans you have for the fall uh, or winter to get your garden in shape for next growing season. All right. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I look forward to see you in the next one. Bye.